channel today i have a very exciting special guest <laughs> please introduce yourself hi i'm alexandra from toronto and she <laughs> makes incredible youtube videos you guys have probably already heard of her but if you haven't you need to check her out she does loads of amazing makeovers DIYs. If you like the stuff on this channel, I think you'll like Alexandra. Thank you, that's amazing. <laughs> so today we've done a little bit of a mini makeover in this room mm -hmm. and I'll do a little bit of an explanation later where we even are, but we've done some styling and some DIYs and yeah. we've had a lot of fun. Can I also just say it's been so surreal to be in your space styling with you because I watched your videos oh, all the time. And I've always watched you since like and the now beginning. I'm here. <laughs> and now I'm here collaborating. It's so here. funny. It's so cool. Oh, and of course, definitely go check her out. I'm going to leave her in the description bar below. And with all of that being said, yeah. let's jump in. Yay! Hey guys, Hermione from the future here. I realize I didn't really properly explain what this video is about. This video is all about rental hacks that are really easy that you can do in a rented space that won't compromise your deposit. This flat is actually my Nan's flat that she's renting in London. She uses it so that she can see family, but it's kind of just been left for six months with some hand-me-down furniture and it's just functioning as a base. So she's let me very kindly do the space up a little bit and at the end I'm going to show you her reaction but for now let's jump into the video. So to start this makeover off I decided to prep the space a bit before Alexandra came because I didn't want to be rushing when she got here I wanted to focus on the DIYs. So I moved quite a few of the bits outside and into other areas of the flat and gave the place a really good sweep to get rid of any dust and debris on the floor and the skirting boards. With all of that sorted I really wanted to start on the first DIY with Alexandra's help. I really wanted to create a focal point in the room behind the bed to anchor the space without spending a ton of money so we created this DIY headboard and to do this we used some very inexpensive items, three of these placemats from Ikea. So should we use the mounting tape? Yeah let's do that. I got this in Poundland like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be good or not. <laughs> okay, like, it's going to be and I hope these are going to be long enough to cover the back. Oh. We could also like, if it's not, we could also just center it. Yeah, we could. And then just <laughs> pretend that the bed is, yeah, thick enough. DIY secrets behind the scenes. So as you guys can see, we're just using mounting tape to tape the placemats above the bed. This was perfect because three mats were the exact same size as a double bed. I kind of wish I'd got six to make it double the height, but three was perfectly fine. So as you can see here, we were just placing them on the wall and crossing our fingers that they weren't wonky. That looks okay, it looks a bit wonky. <laughs> it's all right, it's just character. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing about the mounting tape is that you can really easily remove and re-stick these with no hassle. That looks really good. So good. So this is how it turned out. It was so easy and really inexpensive. And the next project is for above the bed. As you can see, there's these kind of ugly wall sconces that just look a bit out of place. So I decided to cover them with something. To do this, back at home, I used one large embroidery hoop and measured it at the halfway point so that I could cut it down the middle. One hoop will do two lamp covers. I'm doing this with a tiny hacksaw from Poundland and a mitre box to show you guys that you don't need any expensive power tools to do this. You can do this from the comfort of your own home, but of course, please be careful when you do use any kind of tools. Anyway, as you could see just there, I was measuring how tall I wanted the covers to be. Once I decided that, I used a ruler to draw onto this square piece of dowel four equal pieces that I also cut with my tiny hacksaw. <laughs> Once all the bits were prepared, I packed them in my suitcase and took them all up to London with a hot glue gun. These are the bits I had with some material. As you can see here, I'm trying to explain the DIY, but I'm not doing a very, very good job at this. So hopefully I can explain it 
via a video. We just used a hot glue gun to assemble the pieces together. As you can see, the dowels will stretch between the halves of the embroidery hoop, creating this kind of arched shape. Once you have that and your glue is dry, you can measure out the fabric that you'd like by rolling your structure on top of the fabric and cutting out the shape, leaving about an inch worth of excess on the sides to cover it around. And then with the hot glue gun, we're just folding the edges over, gluing them tightly into place, rolling the structure over really tightly so it's not baggy, and then doing the same with the other side. The only thing I would say about this is I really wish I'd used a thicker fabric because no matter how tightly we pulled these shades, they were a little bit baggy in the middle, so a thick fabric would work perfectly well for this. With all the edges tucked over, we had two shades that looked a bit like this and they were ready to be put on the wall, also using some mounting tape. You could use command tape or whatever you have lying around that would work too. So like that? Perfect. Good? Yep. Oh yeah, that holds way better. Oh, I like it. <gasps> yes. Good. You know what it's missing? Pom-poms. It really is. <laughs> so good. High five. High five. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> With that success in the bag, I wanted to show you how I was dressing up the bed with some very easy cushion covers. I created the covers with a large piece of fabric and just used an old IKEA cover and I measured two and a half lengths of the other cushion and then cut an excess on either side of an inch on top of that and just folded the edges over and then ran them through my sewing machine. Sorry, this is a really quick tutorial because I know you've seen me make cushion covers like this so many times. It's just a basic envelope style cushion cover. So with that done, I just folded it over like so. Forget the fact that I haven't actually hemmed the edges here. This was before I put it in the sewing machine. But as you can see, you fold the bottom half up and the top half over into the envelope shape and then just line it up with your original cushion so that you've got the shape right before you run the sides, as I'm showing you here, through your sewing machine once again. Before you sew it together, make sure you've got all of the right sides facing inward so that you can turn it out once it's done and all of the seams are on the inside. You can hand stitch this or use a hot glue gun if you like, if you don't wanna use a sewing machine, but I just find it really quick and easy to use my sewing machine. Once that's done, all you have to do is put your cushion inside and add it to the bed. Creating your own cushion covers makes such a difference in a rented space, especially if you can't paint, it can add a really interesting pop of color. So sometimes in rented apartments, you can't put anything in the wall that involves drilling or screwing. So because I want to do something with the window to dress it up a little bit, I've come up with a plan that involves some command hooks. I've done this before and it works really well as long as you have a very, very light cafe curtain pole and you have a really light curtains, you can hang them up with some very strong command hooks. So I'm gonna show you how I'm doing it. I decided to switch out the command strips that came with the hooks and I'm gonna use these ones that are a bit like Velcro because they're really strong. So very simply, I just added these to the wall, one either side of the window, making sure that they're exactly the same height. I also later on added one to the middle because I was a bit worried that the pole was a bit flimsy. The window is so wide that the pole was getting a little bit um, dragged down. So I added one to the middle as well. That's something to bear in mind, but it holds up really well if you don't want to drill into the walls. And with the curtains done, it was time to style up the space with all of the bits that I managed to squeeze in my suitcase to bring all the way to London. I have a feeling this is going to fall out. Okay, not bad. That's so good. It's definitely going to fall down and crash to the floor in like yep. five minutes. Yep, it will. <laughs> like that? That looks like center. Yes, it looks so good.
So just to refresh your memory, this is what the bedroom looked like before. It was a pretty nice blank canvas, but there wasn't anything special about it. It was kind of a bit like a white box with loads of mismatchy furniture in it. So it needed a little bit of TLC. With this quick transformation done, this is how the room turned out. Now obviously this wasn't a huge makeover, there was no drastic change with paint or anything like that. These are just some very simple hacks that you can do in your space that won't damage the walls and hopefully will leave you with your deposit fully intact when you leave your rented apartment. And uh, you know what? I think it makes a big difference in the space. I definitely love to come back in and do a bigger makeover at some point in the future. But for now, I think it's really cool and it's so much cozier. But it's not my opinion that matters. Let's see what my nan thinks about it. So what do you think? I am just stunned. Absolutely stunned. We didn't get a reveal clip. So I didn't get your... <laughs> <laughs> your true reaction but what do you really think oh of it? i think it's amazing and it looks like oh from a very very basic canvas you've worked wonders darling it really is lovely and what's your favorite part my favorite part i think is the bed head which was your idea in the <laughs> first place <laughs> thank you for coming on my youtube channel <laughs> <laughs> with all of that future hermione out Back to past Hermione and Alexandra, who are gonna outro the video. <laughs> so that was everything for the styling. I hope you guys liked this video and I hope you enjoyed having a special guest. Thank you so much for collaborating Thank with me. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. And we've done a video on Alexandra's channel. Yeah. If you wanna go check that out, go it's check down below. Yeah, yeah, we answered all of your questions. We did like a huge Q and A. So yeah, if you're curious about DIYs and other things like that, Go check it out and with all of that being said thank you guys so much for watching and see you soon bye